In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve an interesting flow rate calculations question from one of our most active subscribers and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Damkwa and if this is your first time here and you'd like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So if you like to learn how to calculate the volume of an injection that is needed to give the amount of drug needed for an IV infusion or you want to be able to calculate the concentration of the drug in the IV bag or you simply want to be able to calculate the IV flow rate in drops per minute or milliliters per hour then this is an excellent example that will show you how to do all of that. Now, if you need a more exhaustive tutorial on IV flow rate calculations or you just want to see additional problems that have been solved, I'm going to put the link to a playlist in the description and I'm going to link it in the cards as well. I'm also going to add this very video to that playlist for your future records. But let's get right to the question. The question says a physician submits a medication order for a 110 pound patient calling for an intravenous drip containing 400 milligrams of dopamine in a 250 milliliter bag of normal saline solution. The drip is to be run at 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute with an IV set that delivers 15 drops per milliliter. Calculate the following. So this question is in four parts. The first part which is A says calculate the milliliters of dopamine injection which has a concentration of 40 milligrams per milliliter to use in the infusion. So let's do a quick analysis here. The question actually is asking for the volume. So that's why it says the milliliters of dopamine injection. And so you're going to use this injection to supply the 400 milligrams of dopamine. And that's the amount of dopamine that you want to put in the bag. So just to give you a physical picture, you have an IV bag, which is 250 milliliters. And you want to put 400 milligrams of dopamine in the bag. However, you're going to use a solution, which is coming from this injection, to accomplish giving the patient this amount of drug. And so the way that will work is we will take this concentration, which is the concentration of the injection. And so that is 40 milligrams of dopamine in every milliliter and create a proportion and here the goal is to figure out how many milliliters would be needed to supply the 400 milligrams of dopamine. So we solve for the unknown here which is x. So x is going to be equal to 1 milliliter times 400 milligrams divided by 40 milligrams. The milligrams cancel out and we have 10 so essentially you will need 10 milliliters of the injection to provide the 400 milligrams of dopamine so for part b the question is asking calculate the concentration of dopamine in the infusion in milligrams per milliliter now to do this we want to identify two quantities we want to identify the amount of dopamine in milligrams and so from the question we see we have 400 milligrams of dopamine and also we need the volume the volume here is going to be the 250 milliliter bag so the concentration in milligrams per milliliter would involve taking the 400 milligrams which is the amount of dopamine in the iv bag divide that by the volume so we have 250 milliliters and this is going to be equal to 1.6 milligrams per milliliter now part c is asking to calculate the drip rate in drops per minute so here we are interested in the drip rate or the flow rate in drops per minute so the most expeditious way is to solve this question using dimensional analysis and i'm going to illustrate how you do that we want to start off with the normalized dose and actually it's a normalized dose also normalized to time so we have five micrograms per kilogram per minute and the way you write that out is five I'm going to use a symbol here the mu so five microgram per kilogram so the kilogram is the denominator and so the minute also is in the denominator so that's how you want to write this portion out okay so now that we've expressed it this way what we need to do is basically move from microgram kilogram per minute to drops per minute and the way we do that is to get rid of some of the terms we can identify that we have kilogram in the denominator so that's a unit of mass and what we need to do actually is determine the amount of dopamine that this patient who weighs 110 pounds actually needs so we factor in the patient's weight which implies that we multiply by 110 pounds 
The only situation here is pounds and kilograms cannot cancel out. They are not consistent, so we want to change the pounds to kilograms. And so we make use of the conversion factor that 2.2 pounds is equivalent to 1 kilogram. The pounds cancel out and the kilograms cancel out. Now, if you are tracking your units, you are now in microgram per minute. So we don't stop here. What we need to do now is convert the micrograms to milligrams because we'll be using a milligram quantity very soon. And so in anticipating that, we want to convert the micrograms to milligrams. And we use the conversion factor, 1,000 micrograms is equal to 1 milligram. So the micrograms cancel out. And now we are in milligrams per minute. Now, the way we want to get rid of the milligrams is to make use of the information that is given in the question, which states that you have 400 milligrams of dopamine in a 250 milliliter bag. And so the next thing that we need to do is actually use that information. And what that would look like is we'll have the 400 milligrams, which is the amount of dopamine in the denominator. And this amount is present in 250 milliliters. So the milligrams cancel out and now we are in milliliters per minute, but we don't stop here because the question says we need to be in drops per minute. And so that's when we use the calibration factor and we've been given 15 drops per ml to be the drop factor or calibration factor. And so the way we'll do that is we'll multiply this by the drop factor and that implies that we have 15 drops in one milliliter. So the milliliter cancels out and now we are in drops per minute. So the way the dimension analysis works is you multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide by everything in the denominator, which will mean that we have 5 at the top times 110 times 1 times 1 times 250 times 15 drops divided by we have minutes in the denominator and then we have 2.2 times 1000 times 400. And when we do the math, that's going to be equal to 2.34 drops per minute. So part D says to calculate the infusion rate in milliliters per hour. So the fastest way to do this is actually to make use of the information we got from part C when we calculated the flow rate in drops per minute. And then we can proceed from that value using dimension analysis to arrive at the infusion rate in milliliters per hour, simply converting drops per minute to milliliters per hour. And so the way we do that is to take the 2.34. So you have 2.34 drops per minute. And then we convert the drops per minute to milliliters per hour, which implies that we need to make use of the drop factor here. And so the way that will work is you have one milliliter being equivalent to 15 drops based on this calibration factor. So the drops will cancel out and now you're in milliliters per minute. And so now we need to convert the minutes to hours. And so we make use of the conversion factor that 60 minutes make an hour. And so the minutes cancel out and we can multiply all the terms in the numerator. So we have 2.34 times 1 milliliter times 60 divided by 15 times 1 hour. And that's going to be equal to 9.36 milliliters per hour, which is approximately equal to 9.4 milliliters per hour. Now, this is the fastest way to actually calculate the infusion rate in milliliters per hour by making use of the flow rate that we calculated in part C in drops per minute and just converting that to milliliters per hour. Alternatively, we could also calculate the infusion rate in milliliters per hour by starting off with the normalized dose rate. And let's just see how that would look like just for comparison. And so you start off with the 5 microgram per kilogram per minute. And then we would convert from microgram per kilogram per minute to milliliters per hour. So let's see how that would look like. We would actually take into consideration the patient's weight. The patient is 110 pounds. So we multiply this by 110. The pounds and the kilograms are not consistent. So we convert the pounds to kilograms. We make use of the conversion factor. 2.2 pounds is equal to 1 kilogram. So the pounds cancel out. The kilograms cancel out. We are now in microgram per minute. So what we need to do next is actually convert the micrograms to milligrams because we will eventually be using this milligram quantity in this 250 ml volume at some point in our dimension analysis. So we make use of the conversion factor that the thousand microgram is equal to one milligram. And so the micrograms cancel out 
you are now in milligrams per minute and we make use of the notion that you have 400 milligrams of dopamine in 250 milliliters of normal saline solution and so what that would imply then is that you have 400 milligrams in 250 milliliters the milligrams cancel out and you are in milliliters per minute so to get to the hours we need to convert the minutes to hour and we make use of the conversion factor that 60 minutes makes one hour the minutes cancel out and now you are in milliliters per hour so to finish it off we want to multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide that by all the terms in the denominator and so what that will look like then is you have five times one one zero times one times one times 250 milliliters times 60 divided by 2.2 times 1000 times 400 times one hour now this is going to be equal to 9.38 milliliters per hour which is approximately equal to 9.4 milliliters per hour so you just juxtapose those two approaches so this is an all approach but you do end up with the same answer the difference in the 9.38 and 9.36 is due to how we rounded it off when we calculated the drops per minute in part c so that's the main difference but you should end up with the same answer nonetheless so I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.